Hello everyone, my name is Russell Hashimi and I'll be your moderator and welcome to today's webinar, Productive Data Analysis. I would like to introduce our presenter, Dr. Yasser Ashaib. Dr. Yasser is a professor of engineering at the American University in Cairo. Dr. Yasser is a graduate of Cairo University in 1990 with a degree in mining engineering and had a PhD from Nancy School of Mines in France on the contribution of fuzzy logic to geotechnical risk assessment of some ancient tombs at the Valley of the Kings in Egypt. Dr. Yasser has been active in teaching and research in various engineering subjects, rock engineering, rock mechanics, data analysis, culture, heritage management, risk assessment, and project management. Since 2006, Dr. Ashaib was highly involved in setting up of the Euro-Mediterranean policies and dialogues on higher education, research, innovation, and culture. As a focal point of many Euro-Mediterranean programs in Egypt and has also presided many senior official meetings with the Euro-Mediterranean space. Since his early years, Victoria Shaib has developed a passion for various fields of science and knowledge dissemination. So before we get started, I would like to go over a few items so you know how to participate during this session. If you have any questions during this session, please you can type it down in the Q&A down and Dr. Yasser will answer them at the end of the session. Second, we encourage you all to share the webinar in your social networks and to register with the new courses that are posted in Arab Oil and Gas Academy Facebook page. So Dr. Yasser, you can start now. Thank you, uh, Rasul. Thank you very much for uh, uh, for 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 this introduction. Um, good evening, everyone, or good afternoon, or good morning, wherever you are. Um, today we are going to uh, actually finish the, the the full phase of the uh, of the course. We will have only one, um, I think, one lecture remaining, uh, which will be next Saturday. Uh, today we will be speaking about uh, predictive data analysis and um, predictive data analysis in the sense that um, since the beginning of this uh, course, we have been uh, looking into data. We have been looking into data different uh, different aspects. Uh, at the beginning, we started by looking into the, the, the visuals of the data, how the data is distributed. I, at some point of time, showed you, for example, the... Um, the map of the world with uh, with the distribution of everyone where where do you come from um, we had also uh, some variables uh, uh, how they look like how they uh, 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 react with each other um, we spoke about correlation uh, how the variables are correlating with each other and um, last time we spoke also about uh, structural data analysis so we looked into the structure of the data uh, we looked into how can we map the whole correlation of everything together, how to measure the similarity or dissimilarity of the, of the data uh, with respect to each other. But um, all of this was not part of uh, a prediction. I mean, it's all it was all about how to look into the data, how to understand the data, how to, how to see it, how does it look like, how does it behave, how does it... Uh, work together, how does, does it relate to each other, how is it similar to each other, and so on and so forth. At no point of time we work it on uh, prediction. How can we expect data to look into the future? Maybe the only point of time when we spoke about that when we uh, was when we were speaking about statistical distribution, which may allow us to look into uh, yeah, probability of occurrence of an event, uh, or if we have a certain distribution, then we may know that. Well, then you know the next event. May, if it, if I mean, if the distribution of the events of a series of an events is following a normal distribution or a log normal, whatever distribution it is, I can predict what will happen in the future uh, if, uh, or the probability that an event will occur in the future. So that's, that was the only, the only point of time that, that, that we did that. But um, most of the, uh, I mean, most of the uh, clients, if I can call it this way, that come to ask for data analysis for their data or that come with their data or many times when we have our own data, we always ask the question, 
how can we predict? How can we know that uh, uh, this thing will happen or this thing will not happen? How can we um, see, look into the future? We, sometimes we call it a forecast. Sometimes we call it prediction. But I mean, it's uh, it's it's more or less the the, the same meaning even, even in language. Today, I'm going to speak about two um, two tools that we use for prediction. One of them is, um, uh, we call it the ANOVA, which is analysis of the variance. So usually we, we use the term ANOVA in, in, in statistics or in, in data analysis. And I will be speaking also about the linear regression or the regression in, in general. I mean, regression in general, but I will take the linear regression as, uh, as an example, as, a, as one of the tools of the... Um, of that, and I will show you a lot of, uh, um, I would say, examples or, 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 or disciplines where we have um, applied those uh, those two tools together. Uh, analysis of the variance. The the analysis of the variance. It's um, it's um, it's a predictive tool that would allow us to use history to predict uh, uh, the, the future. Usually the problematic that we have or the problem that we have is that we have um, a lot of variables together and um, usually, I mean, it works perfectly when you have uh, two groups. Let's say we have, again, we have, um, we have collected the data of the, of the 37 people that are attending the webinar now. And in this data, we have um, among them, uh, let's say um, a variable that is called undergraduate and postgraduate. And I would like to, to make a hypothesis that using uh, the, 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 I mean, using this data, I can predict if we will be uh, 38 or 39 people attending this, uh, this webinar, I can predict based on the data whether this newcomer, this, this new person, or this new two persons, that, or this new N persons that are coming into the, um, into the webinars would be an undergraduate person or a postgraduate person. So I'm putting a hypothesis that actually the, the, the data of undergraduate group are different from the data of postgraduate group. This could be true or this could be not true, but I mean, this is usually the, 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 the prediction uh, that, that we work with. If you, um, if you will consider that uh, gender is only male and female, then you can also use that, uh, for the, I mean, you can use also the, the analysis of variance to, to, to predict some, something new. If you, um, if you look into the behavior of a student uh, in a class, and then you have fail or pass as, uh, as marks at the end of the year, then you can also use that uh, analysis of variance to, uh, to, to do that. If you, um, for example, if, if, if we go to the oil and gas field, if you have the data of, um, of wells that have produced oil and others that have not produced oil, you can maybe also uh, put the hypothesis that using the data, I can predict what will be the status of that uh, of that oil uh, oil well? Will it be produce oil or not produce oil? Depending on the underlying data that uh, that that you have, and usually the data that you have is uh, is could be completely. I mean, could be anything. Could be um, uh, uh, qualitative data. Could be quantitative data. Could be whatever. I mean, that's uh, that's not a that, that that's not a problem. Um, the way it's used is maybe illustrated in this, uh, in, in this graph, or in those two graphs. In those two graphs, we have here uh, two groups of, uh, I mean, this is a domain that I've worked with before. Um, we were treating here the type of uh, subsidence that happens um, uh, due to, uh, let's say, uh, underground works. In, in this case, it was uh, due to uh, underground mining. This is a, an area in, in France where uh, I have worked on, on this problematic. We had um, two types of subsidence that's happening that we observe on the, on, on the ground. And those types were two. I mean, we had brutal, which was like a subsidence that happens all of a sudden, happens very, very fast, and progressive, which happens quite slowly. I mean, we can observe it happening over a period of, let's say, one, one day. So in one day, 
this area will subside of uh, will have a subsidence of like half a meter or one meter while uh, the, in the other case this brutal it will have i mean this subsidence will happen very rapidly and we wanted to know if we have uh, i mean we we i mean of course we studied the the the, the geology we studied a lot of data from from different uh, subsidence that happened in the past and we wanted to know for other uh, regions i mean we have like we had something like uh, 195 regions that were also undermined and we wanted to know when the subsidence will happen will it happen in a progressive way or will it happen in a in, in a brutal way and the reason why we wanted to know that is that if it if the if the uh, if the if the, if the uh, subsidence will happen in a brutal way in a in a in a very rapid way then we can not evacuate for example the, the the population so we need to take different measures for 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 the population while if it will subside over a period of one day or two days then well you can maybe install a monitoring system and then look into the well, what's happening like that i'm i'm only explaining this in order to give you the 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 feeling of 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 of, of how to use it um, if I'll speak about the oil and gas field, for example, I'll come back to that, to that example. Um, um, if you have uh, like uh, had like uh, 100 oil fields in a specific area, uh, uh, sorry, oil, oil wells in a specific area, and you had um, a lot of data collected over for every uh, oil well, then you collect, for example, the, uh, the depth, uh, the, the, uh, the sigma, which is the, uh, the, the pressure, Maybe you've collected um, the amount of um, of water that you've uh, that you've injected or that you've collected. The types of succe succession of of layers that you have in the underground, the type of uh, um, geological structure that you are penetrating inside, and so on. And then you have a variable at the end says that well, this well number one, we had um, oil. This well number two, we didn't have oil. This number, number three, we had oil. Number four, we had oil. Number five, we had oil. But then number 19 or number 20, we didn't have oil. So uh, putting this data together, you can build a model, a statistical model or data uh, or a data model that will tell you, well, okay, if uh, tomorrow someone will come to you with, I mean, within the same maybe parameter of, um, uh, of, of the area and will tell you, listen, I have this uh, new area, area where um, I have observed that we have this geological structure, this uh, depth, this sigma, this so and so and so, all the data that, that you've done, that you've collected over the, the, the 100 uh, oil wells that you've done before. And I would like to ask, or you would always want to know if we will really go and dig this uh, oil well what is the percentage what is the probability that i will get oil or not using data analysis you can actually do that which will save you a lot of money of course because i mean digging an oil uh, oil well will cost a lot of money so doing it with the data it's it's very um, it's very interesting and the way we do it is that like we use graphs like uh, the, the one uh, in front of you and i will show you um uh, the the statistical or the mathematical uh, reasons behind in the in the next slide so you can see for example on the on the on the left hand side this graph on the left hand side if you have measured this variable let's call it variable x i mean i know the name of this variable but i don't want to to disturb you with the with the name of the variable itself let's say that this variable we'll call it variable x uh, if i will measure i mean i have observed here that usually all the progressive uh, 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 subsidence when they happen they happen in areas where the uh, variable X value is ranging from, let's say, 0.45 to 0.55 or 0.56. All the brutal ones happen when you have uh, uh, the, a value of the same variable that is 0.65 and 0.75, for example. So if tomorrow, I mean, if in the future, I will come back to you with uh, 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 an area where, this, where the value of this variable X is 0.5 you can certainly predict that i mean you can look into this graph and you will say okay if it's 0.5 then according to the history that i have according to the model that i've built most probably the 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 subsidence will be progressive will not be uh, brutal on the other hand if i have measured variable x for a, a new zone and 
I have found that the, va that the value of variable X is 0.7 or 70% or whatever, I mean, whatever the, 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 the type of the, of the, of the numbers that, that we use, you can deduct saying that, well, if variable X value is 0.7, then most probably this will be a brutal, uh, uh, brutal subsidence. Uh, on the other hand, we have other variables like this variable, let's call it the variable Y. And um, in this variable Y, you can predict some, I mean, you can predict something in the future, but you cannot not predict it all. For instance, if I will come and tell you in the future, I mean, I have a, a zone that has the variable Y with the value of four, you can deduct yet that, well, you know, uh, uh, most probably, this uh, uh, zone will have a brutal subsidence because you have here 0.4, uh, sorry, you have here four, and it's coinciding with a, a brutal uh, uh, subsidence. But in this case, if I will give you, if I will tell you that the, the value of the variable Y is equal to eight, you will not actually be able to differentiate between uh, uh, the, the two groups. You can say, well, I mean, if someone will ask me what 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 would I deduct if uh, uh, if the value of variable y is eight, I would tell him, I don't know. I mean, you cannot uh, deduct something, and um, this is what we call in our jargon uh, in data analysis the power of uh, differentiating between groups. So this variable here uh, uh, has a, a high power of differentiating between the groups. This variable here doesn't have the same power. Actually, it doesn't have a lot of power to differentiate between, uh, between the groups. To, to look into this, I mean, to quantify this power of differentiating between, between, between the groups. And um, remember that we always uh, work with multi-variable uh, uh, data. We don't all, all, only work with one or two or two variables. We work with like tens and sometimes hundreds of variables. And of course, hundreds or thousands of uh, of data points of rows. Then we need to quantify that power of uh, uh, of differentiating. And in order to do that, we use uh, a statistics called um, sum of squares. And um, I will explain what what uh, what sum of squares is. Um, I know that we didn't pay a lot of attention to that when we when we spoke about it, but. Um, I think that um, maybe I've asked you to look into the, the, the literature and uh, remind yourself of some of statistics that we had when we were young, when we were at school, actually, not, not even at the university. And uh, at that time, we uh, studied or we had, or we have still maybe in mind, um, um, a statistic called variance, the variance. And what is the variance? The variance is uh, a measure of the dispersion of, uh, uh, of, of the data and the dispersion of the data around the mean. And um, the, 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 the way that we uh, uh, mention or the way that we use or the way that we, uh, that all those who are working in statistics and data, statistics and data analysis describe the mean or uh, uh, mentions the mean is by this uh, symbol, mu, in, uh, in Latin. So the variance actually is, is the following is, I mean, suppose that you have uh, five numbers and you have the average of those five numbers. So you have the mean of those five numbers. Then in order to calculate the variance, what you do is that you take each number, the first number minus the mean squared. And then the second number minus the mean squared. Third number minus the mean squared. Fourth number minus the mean squared. Fifth number minus the mean squared. And then you take the summation of those, uh, of those squares and you divide them by the number of, uh, of data variables that you have, which is in this case five. So this is in general, the, uh, the description of this equation that describes what's What's the mean? Uh, sorry, what's the variance? Maybe you know it, and I'm sure that you that you've studied before. Uh, but I mean, we we will we will, we will work with it uh, here. When we speak about the analysis of the variance, we actually call this part of this of the equation. We call it SS. We call it the sum of squares, because it's well, 
its difference between the, the value of the data point and the mean, and, and it's squared, and it is a sum. So it's actually a sum, which is this uh, symbol, sum of sum squares. We call it SS. And this is a term that we use in, in, in statistics uh, a lot of time. So the variance for me will be SS divided by N, which is the number of uh, uh, the, the data points. But let's forget about the data points now, the number of data points now, because we have a lot of uh, data points. Uh, statistically speaking, and math or mathematically speaking, I would say, we've been able to, to describe or to calculate uh, that the total variance of um, a whole bunch of, of, of data points is equal to the variance inside the group with an S to the variance between those those groups. So I should here, uh, actually I should stop the show here and, and go here and add an S here. And let me uh, project it once again. Okay because there was an S that is, uh, that is missing. So the total variance is the variance inside the groups plus the variance between the groups. And in modern terms, as we, as you know, we, we all work in the era of networking and internet and, and so on. So we call it the, the variance intra, which is the variance inside the groups, plus the variance inter, which is between the group. And when you think of this, of those two terms, inter and intra, and when you think about intranetwork and internet or intranet and internet, it's actually the same. It's between networks, that's the, the internet, it's between networks and intranet, it's within the, 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 the net. But anyway, I mean, this is just uh, the, the modern way of, of, of calling things. We, I mean, uh, usually in statistics, we will use total variance is equal to the variance inside the groups plus the variance between the groups. Now, what we do is that, I mean, uh, uh, um, I think he was, uh, he was, um, uh, he was a British uh, mathematician um, around the 19th century. He have invented this uh, statistic, this uh, equation, this number. He said that if we will divide SS between the groups by SS within the groups, we will get a number that is called F. And if this F is growing higher, I mean, as long as this F is growing higher, then this variable is able to differentiate between the groups. So the difference between the groups is getting higher. And this is what I called in the, in the last slide, the power of, uh, uh, of differentiating between the, uh, between the variables. Um, let me go back to this graph here. So I would expect that the F for this variable uh, X that we call it X here is much higher than the uh, F for this variable, which we, which, which we called Y and the, uh, when we were speaking about it uh, here in, the, in this graph. And this is a way to say that, well, um, if you want to choose between which one of those two variables to use to differentiate between the two groups in a new analysis, then you should use the, the, uh, the, 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 the variable x, x because it has a higher f than the, uh, uh, the one of variable, uh, variable y. And this is, I mean, this is known for everyone in statistics and so on. And of course, I mean, we don't usually go and analyze or calculate those by calculator or by hand as we as maybe I used to do, or maybe some of us has used to do in the, in the, in the past. Everything is calculated uh, uh, automatically, but I just wanted to show you the underlying mathematics, although it's not that uh, complicated, to understand the logic, uh, the, the logic behind. But if you go to R, if you go to any statistical software that you might be using, SPSS, Stata, whatever, Excel sometimes, and you ask for the F value of a variable, with groups, you, this is what usually will be, uh, will be brought up. So we use this actually to differentiate between those groups and we use it in order to predict in the future. So I can, I, can, I mean, if, if I have the data, if I have the, the F for every variable that, we, that I have in my data, then I can uh, actually use those with higher F to confirm that I can differentiate between the two groups 
using variable x or variable uh, m or n or, or, or whatever. This is a way of uh, prediction and we use it a lot. Now, um, I'll move on to uh, 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 linear regression. As I said before, uh, um, linear regression is a sp very specific case of regression. And uh, the regression, I mean, the way that, I mean, what we, uh, uh, the reason that we would like to use regression is that we also build on the data, we also build on the history of the data that we have, and then we project into, um, in, into the future. And here I have a, an, a nice graph saying that, okay, well, I have those data points, those uh, circles here, and using those circles, we can build a, a straight line. You can, I mean, sometimes in, in statistical software, we call it a uh, um, trend line, uh, but the, the mathematical, I mean, the statistical or the data analysis name of that line is, we call it the regression line. And we can call it also linear regression line because it is the line that is mathematically passes by most of the points that we have in, in this data. And of course, it doesn't pass by everything because it's a, it's a straight line and you have, you have points here, you have errors. I mean, we call this the, the amount of errors. So usually the, 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 the way we do it is to try to position this line within the data in order to make it the most appropriate for, uh, for, 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 for this data. I mean, if you look into this graph, if you try to, to delete this line from, from this uh, graph, you will find that the points are going like this way. I mean, it's, it's, it's whenever education is, is increasing, prestige is increasing as well. I don't know how can we quantify uh, prestige with, uh, with a number from zero to, to 100, but I mean, this is, just a case that, that, that we have. Probably this is a kind of a coding for the prestige, 20% or 40% or 60%, whatever it is. Education could, could be called number of years that you have spent in education. So six years, eight years, 10 years, 12 years, 14 years, 16 years of education. So, I mean, you have, if you have spent 10 years in, uh, in education, you have some data points that says, well, your prestige is about 22 or 23, Sometimes uh, in another case, your prestige was about like 28, 29, but also there were data, data points where the, your prestige is about 45. So there is like a, a, a difference in the prestige for every uh, um, number of years of education that you've, that you've uh, gone through. And the objective was to uh, draw a straight line to show the trend, but also to project into the future or Sometimes we also use it for interpolation. So suppose that we are uh, uh, looking into this point here on the line, and this point is like 11.5. So if I have 11.5 years of education, what would be my uh, prestige? I mean, based on the, on the data points itself, you cannot do that. And you cannot predict what would be the most um, possible or probable uh, prestige that you, can, uh, that, that you can have. But using data, using this line, you can actually interpolate, you can actually draw, I mean, you can choose which point, which exact point of the line that you want to work with and have the Y for it, which is uh, prestige. The equation for this, for this line is um, as any other straight line that we have in, 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 in mathematics, it's Y equal A plus BX. That's a very straightforward equation and uh, and, uh, and so on. But as I said before, there are a lot of errors here. I mean, uh, uh, if you look into this uh, portion of the graph, you have a lot of points that are above actually the, 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 the line. So if you, uh, uh, if you stand, I mean, let's, uh, let's take this point here, let's take 10. So 10 years of education, and then you have, if you, rely on the line alone, it will give you 40, let's say 42 level of prestige. But if you look into the data points, if you look into 10, you have uh, 20 something and you have 40 something or 50 something. So there is actually an error. And this is what we call in our jargon as well, the error of estimation. So I'm estimating, I'm predicting that the, 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 the level of prestige will be 40 something while 
in reality, it happened that it was 25, sometimes in other cases, 50 something, and, and so on. So this is an error of, of, of the estimate. And this is actually what pushed a lot of us, a lot of people to, to think that maybe the relationship between those two lines is not um, a, a, linear, uh, a, a linear model. It's not a straight line. It, it should not actually be a straight line. It actually, uh, um, let me take a, a pen here and say, well, you know, uh, I can say that, I mean, some of us will say, well, you know, maybe it's a function that goes like this. Others will say, maybe it's a function that goes like this. And some other people would say that maybe it's a polynomial actually, or this one, or that one, or this one. And for every one of those lines or curves that I'm drawing here, you can actually mathematically, you can have a function, but the methodology is the same. Why, would I, why, why do I do this? Why, why do I say this? I say this because you need to have um, a model that you would say, well, looking into the data, and this comes with experience, this comes sometimes with, uh, with, with facility, that some, some softwares even will propose to you uh, the best fit. There's something called the best fit. So what, what we usually do is that we look into the data and the easiest thing to say is that it's a straight line. Okay, let's do a straight line and let's know what is the amount of error that we are uh, having. I will not get you, get you into the mathematics, but we just estimate the amount of error that, that, that we have. Then you can, I mean, I can come and say, well, you know, it's an exponential function that is going like this. And I will, I will get you the parameters of the exponential function. It's y equal um, a plus uh, e uh, to the power of, uh, of x. And let's construct this exponential function. And we put ex this exponential function inside the data, inside the data points, and then we calculate the, uh, the error, the amount of error. If the amount of error is less than the amount of error or a straight line, then an estimation using uh, 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 exponential function is, uh, uh, is more uh, appropriate, I would say. Well, someone would say, well, you know, it's a parabola or a hyperbola. Why not? Let's try the parabola. Let's construct a parabola. Y equal a, uh, a plus x square or x squared plus uh, something. And uh, 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 let's look into the error as well, the error of estimates. And if the error is less, then maybe the parabola is more plausible or is more doable than the exponential function is more than the, uh, uh, the, the, the linear function that, 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 that we have here. Some, some other people would say, well, you know, it's not even a parabola. It's not an y equal x squared. It's y equal x uh, um, cube, x to the power of three, which is a function that goes like this. Or uh, maybe some other people would say, you know, it's, it's following a, sin a sinusoidal function, which is a cyclic function like this. This is the, 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 the data that I'm seeing in, in front of me. Um, some other people would say, well, maybe it's actually a polynomial function of the power n. So it's y equal x uh, power uh, 5 plus uh, x uh, power 2 plus, 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 plus. You can actually go and try to predict the, the function that describes the data that you have as much as you like. There is no limit for that. And uh, what's actually judging which function is more appropriate or predicting more or more suitable for my data than, than another one is actually the amount of error that, that, that we have. So I can imagine that if I would put, for this very specific case, if I would put only a straight line, the blue straight line here, I think that if I will have a, an exponential function, it will be more uh, appropriate than a, a straight line and the amount of error would be less than the, the, the straight line. Um, but the, the, the actually the judging, I mean, there are two judging factors here when we think about, uh, about this regression. The, the first judging factor is of course the amount of error that you have. And the other judging factor is the shape of the function that we will be using. 
And I will give you a very straightforward uh, uh, example for that. COVID-19. Everyone looked into COVID-19 from a data uh, analysis point of view because something new, we didn't know about it, and we wouldn't know, and we wanted to know when this uh, COVID will end, will it ever end or not? Or, I mean, we looked into a, a lot of, um, I mean, we asked a lot of questions. And then came those who are actually studying epidemiology, studying viruses, studying spread of viruses all around the world, everywhere, uh, here and there. And they said, you know, usually the spread of viruses or the epidemic is always using, uh, is always following this function, which is similar similar to the uh, to the normal distribution. So at the beginning you have very low rate of infection, and then it increases with time, and then it accelerates with time, and then it reaches a critical point, and then it starts to decrease, and then the epidemic will end. So. The good news are is that for every epidemic, there is an end. The bad news are that we don't know the parameters. I mean, if you put here days, if you can, if you can say that it started in, in January, in month one, uh, we don't know when it will end. It will end eventually at some point of time. But when, we don't know. This could be month 12, which is December, next December. And it could be also month 36, which is like December of the year 2022. We don't know. And what we don't know either is this inflection point, when it will start to decrease and when it will start to go uh, uh, accelerating. I mean, we can observe things, but we don't know. What actually every epidemiologist and data analysts in the world that has worked on the uh, COVID-19 did was to try to fit the data that we collect from everywhere in the world to this uh, uh, curve that we call it a logistic uh, uh, curve, which is like the the S function. So we, I mean, we have an, an, an I mean, you can search on, on Google uh, the word logistic regression, which is the same uh, tool, but the, the shape of the function is like an S. So they would fit the data to this uh, logistic regression function, and then you take, uh, 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 you, I mean, you continue the, the, the curve using similarity or using uh, like mirroring this, uh, the, the, this function to know when it will uh, um, disappear. And um, one, one other thing that, that, that we have dis discovered is that every country has its own uh, 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 logistic curve or let's say function or let's say uh, curve. It, every, every country has its own curve. And this is also uh, very logic. I mean, because the behavior of people in Egypt is different than the behavior of people in Italy is different than the behavior of people in the US, it's different than the behavior of people in, in, um, in Australia. And we also uh, started looking into similarities of populations. So when I will, actually I did this myself, when I studied COVID-19 propagation in Egypt, I tried to look into countries that are similar to Egypt. And the, the country that I found that is similar to Egypt behavior-wise, I mean, uh, in, in, in the propagation of the, of the, of the, of the, uh, of the virus was Peru. And don't ask me why Peru, because I don't know. I mean, it happened like this. I mean, the propagation of the virus in Egypt, or the, the propagation of the virus in Egypt, according to the data that we have collected, is similar to the propagation of the virus that we have in, in Peru. And I tried myself to fit the, the, the model that we have to the, to the, to the for example, to the, um, to the German model uh, that has preceded Egypt, to the Italian model that has also preceded Egypt, to the Chinese model that has preceded Egypt, but no luck. I mean, it didn't work. But I mean, I developed some some models, and this is why you would you you would you would, you would hear people in the media saying, "Well, you know, we have passed the inflection point. We have passed the peak." I mean, everybody spoke about the. I mean, around month May June, a lot of countries around the world started speaking about the peak. We have passed the peak. Okay, it is dissipating, and the peak was this point. And the bad news is that. You, you only know that you have passed the peak 
when you have already passed it because you cannot predict when you will when you will pass it but the good news are that once you pass the peak you know that it will be going uh, uh, going down and that's what actually was going in in many countries around the world but we still observe the data of the COVID, and um, uh, a lot of countries as well starting observing that it's actually it did like this so it dissipated but didn't reach zero and then it started going up again and this is the case of for, for example of spain now. i mean if you look into the data of spain the number of uh, of uh, of, uh, of cases that we have in Spain of COVID-19, it went up, past the peak and went down. And then recently, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking about, about two, three days, the, the past two, three days, the curve is unfortunately going high. Will it go high and go, uh, let's use colors here, um, blue. Will it go high and be like, this and go down because we know that it will go down or will it go high and be uh let me use the the green and it goes like this this we don't know but we know that it we can fit it to to, to, the, to that model and of course i mean learning from the spanish experience you can build on uh, 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 you can build uh, uh, an Italian experience, or you can build an Egyptian experience, or you can build a U.S. experience. I mean, we always learn from from from, from each other. But uh, uh, we all know. I mean, those who are working in uh, epidemiology will tell you. If you if you would ask them, they will tell you that it will come down one day. We don't know when, but it will come down. And there is an inflection point. There is uh, sorry. There is an inflection point. There is a peak point. So let's uh, let, let, let's do it this way, and all of that, all of what I've been saying for the past, like, I think ten minutes now, is about regression. So you have data, and you have a model, and you are trying to fit the data to the model, and you continuously do that. I mean, you do this model today, and then you look into the prediction that you have to for tomorrow, and then you look into the data of tomorrow. And you compare it to the, to, the, to the prediction that you've done yesterday, and you compare these two together. If they are matching, then fine. Then my, low, then my, 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 uh, my model and the parameters that I'm estimating for the model is doing, are doing fine. If it's not, then you have to change your model, and then you have to rebuild it again, and do it again, and then continue the observation uh, day by day. And I actually, I mean, I've done this myself for, 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 for the data of, of COVID-19. And of course, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of, uh, of, of websites that you can uh, look into this, the, the, those models and it will show you the, 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 the propagation and the expansion of the, of the, of the, of the, uh, of the disease and how it came, came down. And in some, um, I, I, I don't know if you've seen it before, but the, the University of Singapore in, um, in June actually published a paper on, um, I think it was 12 or 16 countries around the world where they have fitted the data to, 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 to models and were able to predict sometimes with, with some uh, good accuracy and sometimes with very bad accuracy. They were able to predict the... the, the, the the end of the virus in some countries when it will happen and 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 so on and so forth so it is it is doable and it is uh, done like that but you have always two uh things to take into consideration first one is the model that you are fitting your data to or that you are thinking that your data is following and i'm here putting on the slide the, the linear model which is the very simple uh the simplest of of, of everything Every other model is more complex than that. So you need, you need to, to, to say that I think that my data is following linear, nonlinear, multilinear, exponential model, whatever, polynomial uh, model, whatever it, it, it is following. That's, that's one thing that you need to look at. And the other thing that you need to look at is the amount of error that you, uh, you have from uh, that model or, 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 or this one. 
Um, I've gathered here a lot of resources, and of course, you can have uh, many other resources. I mean, if you type ANOVA on, on YouTube, if you type linear regression on YouTube, you will find uh, a lot of, uh, uh, or if you type, even if you type regression itself on, on YouTube or in, on the internet, you will find a lot of resources, a lot of explanations, a lot of equations, a lot of things that you, that you need to do. And of course, a lot of tools as well. <clears throat> I mean, I, I didn't go, I mean, I chose not to go to, um, to R or to, um, or to uh, Tableau this time um, for no particular reason. It's just that, um, I mean, I want you really to, to explore it yourself, to look into it yourself and to, um, and to find maybe uh, some data. I've gathered here some five or six, some 10 maybe, uh, 10 videos. But of course, uh, in YouTube, you have hundreds of, of, uh, of videos that will tell you how to perform an ANOVA in Excel, how to do the linear regression in Excel, how to do it in R, how to do it in SPSS, how to do it in this software, how to, um, sometimes, sometimes you have even specific softwares or specific tools that are done in order to, uh, uh, to look into, the, uh, into ANOVA uh, itself or whatever. So um, by this, um, I, will, I will stop here speaking about the, uh, <clears throat> the predictive data analysis. And I will actually um, show you uh, something that you've uh, asked it for before. Uh, which is the uh, analysis of, uh, that the, the data analysis that we've done that um, I mean a company that I've worked with we have done on um, on data coming from the Gulf of Mexico and um, let me stop this share and uh, identify yes this is the published paper so yes this is it I'm sharing the screen. This is, well, this is, uh, this is the paper that, that, uh, that I spoke about. This is the data that, come, that came from uh, Gulf of Mexico. And at that time, 2008, um, I was um, working as a shareholder in a company in Egypt called Informatics International. And um, our main work was to, uh, was actually to work on data mining in the oil and gas field. I mean, that was our, uh, 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 the company still exists, by the way, but uh, I hope that I'm not making any publicity for, for any commercial thing. But anyway, this is a, a work that, uh, that we've done uh, on the uh, showing how can we uh, extract information from data in oil fields. And as I spoke maybe at the very first uh, uh, webinar or lecture that we spoke about, the cycle of the data analysis or the cycle of the data mining. Remember that you start by asking a question, exploring the data, looking, uh, sorry, collecting the data, preparing the data, looking into the data structure, and then maybe move to uh, prediction of the data. And then you come back and ask other questions and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's the, that's the data mining cycle explained here. So you understand the, what's the business. In this case, it's the oil and gas. You understand what's the data, you prepare the data, you model the data, and then you evaluate, and then you deploy. I mean, in, in this case, we, are, we were speaking also about deployment of, of, this, of, of this data. And the more you have, the more you, you can even predict and see into, and look into, uh, into, into the future. So this is the, the, the uh, case study, and you will see here we have, this is the data of injection rates. So we were comparing different uh, fields in terms of injection rates. Well, sorry, different wells. So well one, well two, well three, well four, five, six. And this is the, 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 the dates and the injections that were, that were done. And of course, we would tie the injection rate to the production rate in order to see what's... Actually, the, the question that we were asking was what is the uh, optimum injection rate that we should use for... Uh, uh, the uh, the oil well, and what is also the quality uh, the sorry the parameters of the water that we have to inject in order to obtain the best uh, uh, 
the best solution because we've discovered also that the, the quality of the water, of the components of the water, the amount of oxygen, chlorine, and so on in the water, it's a factor that plays a lot with the injection, with the injection and also with the production of, um, of, of, of the data. So um, you have here, yeah, I mean, those, those were the, uh, the, the parameters that we took into consideration. I mean, those were the variables that we, that we had. Injection rate, wellhead pressure, reservoir pressure, oil and water, chloride, bicarbonate, sulfate, sodium, calcium, magnesium, in, of course, in water, total iron, uh, on-site pH, dissolved solid salinity. I mean, a lot of, a lot of variables that, the, the, that we have for, 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 for the field. And we were able to describe the data. We were able to say, uh, I will show you here, um, yeah, like the descriptive model that we've, uh, that, that we've seen here. So we had here some variables that were uh, negatively affecting the, uh, the production rate, some others that were positively uh, affecting the, the, the production rate. And we were able to know that looking into the structure of the data. The next, uh, uh, you see here, I mean, the, the description is, of course, here, the, the variables that are proportional to the injection rate or, uh, and so on. Um, we, we mentioned them here. Um, here, when we, when, we, when, we, when we wanted to build our predictive model, we didn't actually look into uh, the logistic regression or the linear regression that, that we've done. We opted for a neural network. A neural network in the base, in the heart of, an, of, a, of a neural network, uh, is actually a, a logistic regression. So, in, but, but instead of having a one logistic regression uh, or a one regression model for your data, you actually divide your data into small subsets, and then you can uh, you, can, you can build a, a model for it. And I'll show you how um, I'll show you this concept. Let me come back to the uh, uh, yes, the new share. Let me come back to the to the presentation uh, because I can show you uh, yes, it's, let's project it. Uh, Okay, I just want to, I want to see this graph. Okay, well, um, in order to understand how, um, I mean, the logic behind is that you can, you can actually come to this, uh, to this graph and say, well, you know, this area here, I see a trend that is going this way, a linear trend that is going this way. And this area here, I see a linear trend that is going that way. And this area here, I see a, a, another trend that is going that way. Let me try to, do, to, to draw this. Yes, okay, so here, I'm, I'm hypothetically, of course, I have here this one, I have here that one, and I here have that one, and here probably I have that one, and here I have that one. So it's, I mean, actually what, what, I'm, what I'm drawing here is not a, a polynomial function. It's a function that is actually dependent of where you are in the data. So this line here, for me, I mean, supposedly, hypothetically, is the best function that describes the behavior of this data, for example. Now, no mathematics in the world can produce a mathematical function that will fit this, those lines that I have brought here. And this is where actually neural networks comes in, into the game, or uh, what I would call, um, yeah, I mean like uh, uh, cutting the data into uh, small portions. So you can say, well, if the data values X is between six and eight, you can use, this function. If the data point is between eight and 10, you can use this function. If the data point is between 10 and 12, you can use this function. If the data point is between 12 and 14, you can use this function. If the data point is between 14 and 16, you can actually use this function. And actually, if you think about it, this is exactly what neural networks would do but you don't see it. I mean, you don't see those functions. 
the neural networks will, will look into the data, into your data, and will try to understand that uh, which parts of the data are, um, are fitted to which model. We don't call it model in this case, we call it some other names, but I, I will not, uh, I, I will not into, get into the details of that one. But the, usually what, what the neural networks would do is that it will collect different small models, smaller models, will cut the model, the, the, the curve into smaller, uh, smaller nodes, we call, it, we call it nodes, and then it will uh, simulate it uh, um, in, in, in such ways. Um, it's, uh, its advantage is that it's very intelligent, it's very advanced, I would say, and its disadvantage is that at the end you don't have uh, an equation. I mean, and sometimes we as humans, we like to see equation to, to uh, to, to look for. So I'll go back to the, uh, to the paper, which is, yes, it's here. So this is what we've done here, that uh, we, we thought that uh, uh, the number of variables that we have and the complexity of the behavior of the water injection with respect to the, uh, to the production rate is very complex that we cannot actually uh, use that. So you see here, we had some uh, different models. We def defined different models, different neural networks. And as I said before, you don't only need the model, you need also the amount of error. And this is what we've had, you know, what, we have, what we have here, what we had here, which is R square. R square is a measurement of the um, goodness of fit. So the higher the, the R square, the good is, uh, is, the, is the model. And actually what we have found is that model A, B, C, D, and E are all having like uh, 86%, around 86%. And here comes another, um, another skill, I would say. Um, it's uh, optimization. So model A will give you an accuracy of 86% in the prediction, but it uses 12 variables, 12 input. Model B gives you even higher uh, uh, prediction rate, but it uses only 11 variables, not, not 12. And then you have model E, which gives you 86% as well, and you have only eight variables. And this also plays a lot for, uh, for, for, for people will working in the, uh, in, the, in the oil and gas or in any, in any domain. Um, shall I invest in measuring 12 variables in order to get 86% or it's better to use those only eight variables and get a similar or sometimes less. I mean, sometimes we, I mean, um, if I have, if, suppose if I had here 86% and then I had here like 80% with only eight variables, I would have, personally, I would have gone for uh, uh, this model and use it better than, uh, than that one because it's, it's worth it. I don't need much more uh, variables to, uh, to measure. So sometimes you weigh your, uh, your options. Uh, how, can we, uh, how can we do that? Uh, well, uh, there, there are some conclusions about it. And uh, of course, some references you can look at and you can look into the data and so on and so forth. Um, I've passed this, uh, this paper to uh, uh, Professor Garhi. Um, and I think that he can also pass it to you. It's it's public uh, paper in 2008, so it's more than even 12 years now that it has been published. Uh, enjoy it, and definitely you will find a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of similar papers, maybe better papers that are published on the same subject. If you look into, uh, um, uh, I mean, the, the the literature of um, oil and gas and data analysis and um, and so on. Um, I think that I have finished for, for, for today. I'll go back to, the, uh, to share the presentation again, um, to say that uh, wrapping as a wrap up, um, today we've spoken about analysis of variance as a tool for a prediction. And we've spoke also about uh, regression as a tool for, for, for prediction. And ANOVA is to measure- It's 19 hours. Sorry. ANOVA is to, to, to measure the capacity of uh, a variable, a numerical variable to 
differentiate between uh, between two groups. And it's usually a numerical variable, one, two, three, one, one, five, zero, one, whatever uh, we code our, our variable into. Um, it uses the sum of squares, as I explained, and uh, the sum of squares is a derivative of the variance, so it's almost the same thing. And you have here a statistic called f. Whenever the f is increased for a variable, the difference between the groups increases, and this you can find uh, everywhere. Now, linear regression. Uh, the the reason for using linear, the reason for using regression, actually, every any any kind of regression, is that we want to evaluate um, the trends, or we, we want to fit the data that we have to a model, uh, whatever the model is. Here, I'm I'm just proposing the the linear model, but as I said before, there is a zillions of, of other models and inventions and, and people would invent different models that, uh, that fit their data. And uh, we spoke a little bit about uh, logistic regression, which is the case of COVID-19, because we know that this is the model that, that fits um, propagation of viruses. And uh, finally, I showed you the, um, this paper that has been published in 2008 about the uh, oil and gas field. I have finished and I hope that uh, you have a lot of questions to ask. And please, 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 again, as I repeat every time that we have a lecture together, go to the internet, look into those uh, notions that I spoke about. I know that I don't say much. I don't go into deep into details because it will take us maybe uh, 50 or, or, or more lectures to, to go into the details of every word that, that, that we say. But I trust that as a researcher, as researchers, as you are, as, uh, as students, as you are, if you are interested in this subject, then you need to read a lot about it. It's not enough to just to attend a, a course or two or a lecture or two or, or so on. You need to look into the internet and, 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 and search for information and you will get a lot of knowledge. Uh, I'm sure that, 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 that this will be done. Thank you, Thank Victoria, you. sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we already have a few questions. Omar asks, can two areas have such similarity in structure and parameters? So we can use the data model built for one area and apply it to another area. Um, uh, well, uh, this is very uh, tricky. Uh, it goes by uh, experience. I mean, what I, what I have experienced myself is that um, if you look at it from a macro point of view, the model works um, everywhere. Like I said, in COVID, in COVID, we knew that the model is um, like uh, looks like a normal function, normal distribution function. We knew that. But then, if you will have a model from uh, uh, from Egypt and you would like to apply it to Italy, um, this is very risky. Sometimes you need to. Uh, reprogram your model uh, again and again because data are different. I mean, those I mean those 39 people who are attending this course are representative of the population, of course. But maybe tomorrow, if we will have another 39 people attending another course, their behavior and their data is completely different. So I know that they are following a normal distribution, but this normal distribution for those 38 is maybe different from uh, others. Okay, why the terms intra and inter are used for sum of squares? Are in they used in variance? Variance. Well, um, we actually in, in in statistics today we use um, the word variance and sum of squares as uh, synonymous to each other, and um, inter and intra are just names. I mean. You can take off inter and intra and think about within groups and between groups. But you know, I mean, with the advancement of science and advancement of technology, people like used to use the, the terms of, uh, of, of, of others, so. Okay, how the term F is a growing higher? Um, uh, I mean, uh, if you will compute the term F for the two graphs, let me... Yes, maybe this is uh, something that I didn't explain much. If you will cal calculate F for this graph, for this variable, you will find that its value is 
much 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 higher than the f for this uh, for this variable so that's why i say if you i mean the more f is is increased the more power uh, it has okay is there another way to this it use the operate function other than multiple iteration uh no no, no. I mean, even even those softwares that that would say best fit, that would calculate for you best fit, what they do is that they just iterate. They just try one model, two model, three model, five model. I mean, I remember uh, in my in my PhD years when I wanted to fit uh, some of the data to some of the functions, and I would fill my my my, my computer with uh, a list of all imaginable functions that I can think of. And then leave it all night long to do iterations, iterations, iterations. And then I come back the next day, and it would, it would tell me this function has the best R square or the best fit, and this function has the least. And then I will look into that. Sometimes we rely on uh, on experience, as I said before. I mean, we know, or people, humanity knows that uh, uh, um, uh, epidemic uh, uh, spread of a virus is following a, a logistic function. So it has to be a logistic function. I mean. It cannot be something uh, something different. So, this but this is based on experience. This is not based on on anything else. Okay, there is a request from Abdul Bakar. Uh, if you can share the data, that you, they will be working on it. Um, this is actually um, <clears throat> a coming back question. This is the second time that I asked this question, and um, unfortunately, um, I cannot. Data is the, sometimes. I mean, it's it's a pro, it's a it's a property of the client sometimes, and sometimes the client doesn't want to share his data with with anyone else. My advice is to look into the internet, and again, on the internet you will find a huge amount of databases and data uh, sets that you can use for anything. I mean, if you type data for Nova or data for this or data for that, you will find uh, a lot of data. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yasser, and that's all for today. Thank you all, and wish you all a lovely evening. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.